Yeah, welcome to yet another edition of DXB Today. Things might be warming up out there at the moment, as I'm sure you've seen throughout the day, but things certainly not slowing down. That's basically what we're looking at on the show here today. Yep, yeah, we know this is a city that keeps on delivering, the city that never sleeps. Uh, the City of Gold, a playground for the rich and famous. It comes with many tags. What about you, your family and generations to come? Is this a city for the ages? This is what's coming up. We've got a guest presenter and our very own Dina Butti, who embark on a forest playscape at X Park Dubai Champion Free Play. And we've got the talented singer Matt West joining us with his saxophone to close the night. I see I'm in very handsome company this ah. evening, gentlemen. Ah, what are you after? <laughs> <laughs> I like it when I'm only the only girl on the set. You know? <laughs> right, tonight there's a focus on all things um, cultural. We've got some cultural pundits coming on the show. Uh, we are speaking to the founders of Ravi Restaurant, one of my favorite places to eat. And also there's a focus on Dubai being the city for all generations. I mean, in one, one of the recent surveys, Dubai has ranked number one city for expats to live in. And I'm not surprised by that. But Tom, I'm curious to know, what does it mean to you when we say that Dubai is a city for all generations? I think for a long time, Dubai was seen as quite a sort of transient city, by which yeah. I mean a lot of people will come here for short term contracts. And yet in recent years, and this is thanks in large part to the efforts of governments, it's become a city for generations mm -hmm. now. It's a place where people come to build a family. It's a place where families grow. It's a place where people lay down their, their roots. And that's why I think we're going to be talking to cultural and artistic foundations that help to promote that. We're talking to restaurant businesses that uh, stand testament to that today. And I think that's why it needs to be seen as, as a city of the ages. That's my thesis, at least. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. Um, our children were born here, all of us. Yes. You know what I mean? We're, we're all OGs in the game, as it were. Um, and, and with that, you, you, you have that, that iconic status of, of like being in a place that is uh, evolving. And we're helping it evolve, which is a nice thing. Uh, but I agree with you totally. It's always that, that, trans, that translucent place that everyone's just like coming and going and, and where it is geographically as well with the airport and stuff. But um, yeah, now it's time to build foundations and it's, it's a great place to be. Speaking of building foundations, I mean, all of us have been here for a very long time, but there's someone who can brag a lot more years than we can in the city. So let's find out who our guest co-host tonight is. Hi, I'm Isabel Abel Hall, founder of the Emirates Literature Foundation, and I look forward to seeing you in a bit. The legend like Isabel will join us in just a minute. But first, highlighting Dubai as a city for all ages, is one of the things that our very own Dina Butti sent her son down to draw in the natural forest style playscape just off Kite Beach created to bring kids closer to mother nature. Wonderful thing. This is Faris and his mum at X Park Julia. Hi, my name is Faris and I'm an X Park Junior. Let's find out what it's all about. What's your name? My name is Candice Finucci. What do you think kids will learn here? You know, being in, the, in nature and surrounded by animals and the natural environment, you can learn so much more. You can learn stuff that you can't learn in a classroom. You can't learn looking at an iPad or TV. You learn in a natural, in a natural area, which is paradise. Why did you make X Park Junior? I made X Park Junior because I grew up in the middle of Africa on a game reserve that was filled with animals, buffalo and rhino and giraffe, and I had the most incredible upbringing. So I wanted children to have that same feeling of growing up and being surrounded by nature and these beautiful trees and the sound of the water running and the animals walking around. I couldn't give a game farm, but we try to get as close to one as possible. Why do you have animals in X Park? playing with them so I think it's such an important part for children to learn how to respect animals how to take care of them because they they just like humans they've got feelings you know they don't like being chased that we need to you know learn how to take care of them what they eat so it's a big it's a great opportunity to have them here in the park what is this place we're standing in right now 
So this is a new area. We just wanted to extend the park because kids come in. We have a lot of schools coming down to X Park Junior where they learn urban forest school program. They do arts and crafts using nature. They do learn how to plant trees. They learn how to build shelters. They learn how to make a campfire. Thank you, Candy. Thank you, Ferris. You are amazing. Thank you so much. If you've never been to X Park Junior, you should come because it's exciting and fun. Well, we all think we've been led up the X Park path there because we read that Dina had been sent on assignment to check out things. She's only got to send her son to do the job for her as well. I think it's send your kid to work day, Tom. Well, literally, isn't it? <laughs> literally. Not bring your kid to work, it's send your kid to work day. Quite right, too. Dina's got it right there. Right, uh, let's get back to today's theme uh, as we investigate as whether or not Dubai has become a city for all ages. Who with our guest co-host, the founder of the region's largest and, of course, most prestigious literary event, fostering educational initiatives among young minds uh, through reading and literature. A renowned cultural leader here in the UAE and further afield. Please welcome to DXB today, Isabel Abuhul OBE. Isabel, lovely to see you as well. Oh, I was thinking, who are you talking about? Okay, <laughs> thank you for that wonderful, wonderful introduction to all of you. And it's such a pleasure to be here. And um, I'm not going to reveal my age, but I have been here since 1968 and I have lived through what, what an incredible dream mm. it has been over those years. You're a living example of, of, of the evolution of this city uh, and the fact that it you know you can lay lay claim to having brought generations to the city be part of that but has 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 the sort of ecosystem changed has it has it changed from being a short term posting posting for expats to becoming home absolutely i think people now who grow up here you talk about your children um, they want to come back. Yeah. This is home and we are a global city and they are global citizens So this feels so much like home. So when they go away to university, they're just thinking this is not just like Dubai and they want they want to come back here and um, I now have eight grandchildren and so it's sort of you know seeing those generations seeing the changes and how Dubai has evolved it is just incredible. It is incredible to think you know, I couldn't in my wildest dreams have ever imagined that this would be the Dubai of today. Mm. I mean, I came here in 1990, I was probably four years old at the time, but, ha you know, having lived in this city since the 60s, how would you say um, education and the whole literary field has evolved over the years in the city? Oh, incredible. It's been incredible to watch the journey of um, literature, and education, all those things. And those are my passions. Education and literature are joined for me. And I've stay, stayed very true to my path, uh, you know, following those and seeing what gaps there were and trying to do something about it. And that's what so many people in Dubai have done. They may have come from all corners of the earth, but they're looking and thinking, Dubai is absolutely incredible, but I miss A or B, and then they do something about it. And this is a city where you can dream those dreams and you can, if you're prepared to work hard, make them come true. And Isabel, you're an icon, I would say, um, when it comes to creating culture. Um, how do you see the evolution of culture here? Because now with obviously literature, you've got AI involved in there as well. But how do you maintain and sustain that, um, that, that regularity of, of culture? Well, there's a huge culture, Emirati culture, and I think that's becoming more and more apparent and more and more celebrated. And certainly in all the ventures we have with the foundation, that's what we want to get involved in. And I think we have all of the up and coming things. So the youth theatres, the art, uh, the music, all of that is being supported by the government and they are doing whatever they can to make culture accessible in new and different ways to young people. But on that note, we have a conference, the Reading for Pleasure conference, Tom, on the 18th and 19th this weekend. It's free to anyone to attend. It's really aimed at uh, educators. And we've got 40 renowned professors from around the world telling us about why Reading for Pleasure mm. is the medicine we all need to. Mm. Mary Poppins would have agreed with me, I know. <laughs> is the medicine we need to take because of this, our brains. Without reading 
and without, if this is all we're doing, you know, gaming, social media, etc., the neural pathways in our brains are not going to develop, and particularly for young people. Correct. So this is really important. Correct. And that sort of leads to my next question about if we are investigating today whether this is a city for all ages, and going back to your point as well of, you know, generations growing up here, and we've certainly seen the evolution, we've seen the, inf the, the investment, the infrastructure in, in, in education, in health, in, across the board, etc. But those generations coming back as well, Yes, part and parcel of that is to be close to family. Part and parcel of that is to come back to some good home-cooked food, etc., as well, and the lifestyle. But what about the infrastructure that is built? I mean, this is something that, 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 that has been done with purpose, isn't it, down the years, to entice um, people of all ages and all demographics to, fight, to, talk, to call this place home. Absolutely. I mean, you know, um, I have a lot of friends in my age group, and um, whether they are from the Emirates, whether they've come here, um, there's so much to do. Yeah. There is so much to do. It is not a city just for young people. Mm. And actually it is because we all feel we're so young. That's one of the things in Dubai. You can actually celebrate. You don't need to worry. The elixir, you don't need to sort of get out your Zimmer frames and things like that. There will be something else. But the infrastructure that's in place everywhere is so incredible. I mean, the cycle tracks, I love cycling. Cycle tracks along the beaches, the uh, night swimming. I mean, all of these things, every time Dubai comes up with something new and amazing, it's such a, oh, you know, I couldn't ever live anywhere else. Isabel, do you still have the books outside of your home that people can come and... Uh... That's just down the road from where I yeah. am. And that's that wonderful lady. She has this bookcase and she fills it with books and anyone can help themselves to books. Yeah. And um, she is an incredible cultural icon. Um, and she puts her heart and soul into everything that she does. And yes, that is still there. And when I pass and I've got spare books, I'm very bad at giving books away. I hoard, <laughs> I'm a terrible hoarder. <laughs> Isabella, as someone who's been here for the number of years that you have been here, how important do you think it is to preserve the culture, the heritage of Dubai while embracing inclusivity and progress? It's so important because this is the story you know, heritage is our story, language is our story, and if we do not <coughs> celebrate, if we, not, if we don't tell younger generations uh, about our past, then um, we are not doing them a service. They need to know, and I have this conversation with my large extended Emirati family, you know, I, I, I say, share those stories the stories that you told me when I came all those years ago, make sure your grandchildren know about how it was. And I mean, my grandchildren were forever asking me, you know, did you have this? Did you have that? You know, when you go to heaven, will there be iPads? <laughs> <laughs> That's the latest one of one of them. You know, he's sort of thinking about, you know, that I'll be able to message him from iPad or something ridiculous. <laughs> I said, no iPads in heaven, no. <laughs> one big iPad. <laughs> you know, I can completely relate to you because it is very important for me to, for, for, for my daughter to know all the things that I grew up with, right from 90s music to movies. We sat together and watched the Flintstones the other day. I take her down to Satwa and show her the old neighborhood that I grew up in. She's not particularly excited about it, but I still like to introduce that to her because it is important. Yeah, let, them about, huh? let them know they're lucky. Let them know they're lucky and blessed exactly. to have what they've got Exactly. I mean, I, think, I feel like they're quite desensitized to a lot of the luxuries that they have today because they grow up with this, you know. We enjoy the finer things back in the day a little bit more, I feel. Isabel, please stick with us. There's so much more we want to speak to you uh, about, uh, so please hang around with us. Coming up, we find out how Dubai is preserving the cultural dining at an iconic landmark in the city, the legendary Ravi restaurant after this, so stay with us.